Happy Monday, everyone. This is Martha with Nature Niche. And this week, uh, we're returning to Kentucky Trail Adventures. This is part two, new friends. I thought I'd share uh, some new species that I was able to observe um, on our trip to the Red River Gorge. Uh, just a reminder, those are sandstone um, cliffs in the southern Appalachian Mountains in east central Kentucky. So the first um, site that I wanted to share, I don't think I shared this one last week, is the Natural Bridge State Park. And it is surrounded by Daniel Boone National Forest. It's a natural sandstone arch um, that has attracted tourists for over a century. It's 30 feet wide. Um, it spans uh, 78 feet and is uh, 65 feet high. And the surrounding um, cliffs are part of the Cumberland Plateau. Um, and that sits about 1,250 feet above sea level. Um, and the, the cliffs are about 500 feet above the middle fork of the Red River. Um, and weathering over millions of years has formed um, this arch and the sandstone ridge tops and upper slopes um, have dry acidic soils dominated by oak and pine with um, mountain laurel and huckleberries, green briar beneath and sandwiched between um, the upper slopes and the ridge tops um, are the sandstone cliffs and at Red River Gorge um, there are over 900 miles of nearly contiguous sandstone cliff lines surrounding the river valley. The lower slopes are more mesic. Uh, the fertile soils have a more neutral pH and you have a more rich herbaceous um, vegetation with a more diverse um, overstory and understory. The riparian habitats sit at the bottom of the valley with nutrient-rich soils. They're subject to inundation or flooding. And we had the really neat experience of riding the sky lift up to Natural Bridge. Uh, you got to see the steep topography firsthand and it was a neat way to see the surrounding vegetation. So let me introduce you to um, some of the new friends I made. One species was Rhododendron maximum, uh, known as Great Laurel or Great Rhododendron and also Rose Bay Rhododendron. And it is an evergreen shrub. Um, it prefers acidic soils. It can do this really neat thing where it'll roll its leaves up to help avoid frost damage um, on cold days. And it's well regarded for its white to pink, uh, beautiful flowers that bloom in June and July. So I didn't get to see those, um, but it was uh, really neat to see this species in a bunch of different ha habitats. Um, it does like moist but well-drained, uh, protected forested slopes, and it is the larval host for striped hair streak and gray comma butterflies and it's a great nectar species for hummingbirds and many butterfly species. The honey produced from this uh, genus is poisonous to humans as are the leaves so um, meant to be enjoyed but not consumed. Here it is um, at the rock arch ridge. Um, you can see the rhododendron growing out onto the bridge. So we saw lots of that on different uh, slopes as well as mountain laurel, Kelmia latifolia. This is another evergreen shrub that really likes acid soils. Um, it will grow right side by side with the rhododendron. And its leaves are also poisonous to humans and livestock. And like the rhododendron, it has really pretty flowers. Um, this species blooms in May. It has rose to white colored uh, flowers with purple markings. 
and it's a great nectar source for hummingbirds and butterflies as well. I think this has to be my favorite new species from the trip, big leaf magnolia. I didn't know this species um, even existed. It's known as magnolia macrophylla and it looks tropical. It's deciduous, although it can be evergreen in the deep south, and it really just stands out. Its leaves are up to 30 inches long. They are the largest simple leaves of any tree species native to North America. They're green above and a silvery gray below, so at a distance, um, if moving in the wind, you can pick them up and they're just very coarse, coarse textured compared to the other vegetation in the um, wooded hillsides. They can get tattered in high winds. And so this species does grow best um, in the understory. It only gets about 30 to 40 feet tall um, on protected sites where you don't have a lot of wind damage, um, ripping up the leaves. It likes moist, well-drained wooded slopes with organically rich soils. And the species has large fragrant white flowers uh, with rose purple uh, petal bases. The flowers themselves are eight to 12 inches wide. They bloom in May, so I didn't get to see them, but I did see the spherical uh, cone-like fruits that turn red in summer. And uh, it can take as many as 12 years for an individual to bloom. The flowers are beetle pollinated and the fruit attract many songbirds um, as well as being eaten by um, mammals. And it makes a very interesting specimen tree for use when doing native landscaping. Next, I wanna take you back to Skybridge, another um, sandstone arch that's within the Daniel Boone National Forest and show you a new species, uh, American holly, also known as Christmas holly, Ilex opaca. And this is an evergreen uh, tree. It has spiny, a uh, tubed margin to its thick leathery leaves. Um, it gets about 40 to 50 feet tall, often has multiple crooked branches, and uh, it is a popular holiday and landscape tree, but in natural settings, you'll find it in moist, uh, slightly acidic, well-drained uh, soils. It's very shade tolerant. It's a typical understory tree. You'll see it with sweet gum and red maple. American beach, um, and uh, it flowers in late spring, and the white flowers are pollinated by bees, wasps, ants, and night flying moths. The fruit are bright red berry like droops that are eaten by many bird species, um, in particular, flocks of cedar waxwings and robins. Uh, but turkeys and bobwhite quail, bluebirds all enjoy this fruit that um, can persist into the winter months, um, as well as uh, deer and squirrels. Um, and it is an excellent source of honey as well. And like our, our native Michigan holly, it is dioecious, so you need to make sure you plant um, multiples so that you have plants with male flowers, plants with female flowers, and are able to get um, the fruit for the wildlife benefits. And then let me take you back to Horseshoe Falls in Muir Valley and show you something interesting that I found uh, on the cliff faces, like right behind the waterfalls. So this is pipe organ mud dauber. It's a type of wasp um, that makes long tunnels molded from mud and usually five to six pipes clustered together so that they look like pipe organs. 
And these wasps will build their nests um, on any vertical surface, including sandstone cliffs, uh, siding, brick, and wooden walls. I didn't get to see them, but they are a glossy black wasp that have black wings that may look metallic blue in certain lights. The females forage for spiders and bring them back to the mud nest alive but paralyzed. And in each cell of the nest, they provision about three to eight spiders and lay an egg. And when the larvae um, hatch, they uh, eat the spiders as they're growing. The male wasps are known to guard the nest while the female um, is foraging for spiders. And uh, he'll also guard the young from intruders, parasites, other males. Um, and if you get close to an active nest, you may hear a loud buzzing sound. And that's the male sort of warning you off as you approach. It is a non-aggressive wasp species. And it really is only going to sting you if you try to handle the adult wasps or you're physically um, disturbing the nest itself, but they range across southeastern Canada and the eastern U.S. Um, it has been reported for Michigan, but I've never seen it, so it was a new species for me. This was another insect that I did not successfully identify. I'm pretty sure it's another type of wasp, and it had a huge <laughs> spider uh, probably paralyzed and perhaps going back to some sort of nest uh, to provide for uh, future larvae. But it was uh, quite the sight to see and I, I thought I would share it. Lastly, I'll take you back to Creation Falls in the Daniel Boone National Forest. And I want to, one, show you um, this neat little overhang um, over the water and the rhododendron shrubs above. It was just a really uh, beautiful sight. And I also found one last uh, new plant species to share, and that is Devil's Walking Stick, also known as Hercules Club, Aurelia spinosa. So this is a unique a uh, deciduous shrub with a big personality. We have a few um, native species in Michigan, but certainly not this one. It gets its name from its stout, sharp armature. It has spines um, on the around the leaf scars. Um, they get bigger as the twig grows, uh, also on the leaf um, stalks and new stem growth. And it's a large upright clonal shrub that grows in moist wooded edges and along streams on fertile soils. Overall, it has an umbrella-like appearance with bare lower stems and then big wide spreading canopies because of the huge compound leaves. Um, these are reportedly the largest compound leaves in North America. Uh, they can be bipinnate or tripinnate, meaning uh, double or triple compound in their layout. And they can be two to five feet long uh, by uh, two to four feet wide. So really huge compound leaves. Um, and the species is known for its heavy flower and fruit set. It um, blooms in July and August, uh, lots of white flowers in a huge terminal umbilose uh, panicle, and that inflorescence can be two feet long. And the nectar of those flowers attracts uh, lots of bees and butterflies, other pollinators, and the uh, flowers yield many spherical fleshy black droops in late August into October. Um, and those fruits are eaten by songbirds, small mammals, foxes, raccoons, and opossums. Um, and just note that handling the bark or the roots can cause an allergic skin reaction. So um, 
an interesting uh, shrub that took me a while to identify, but I thought would be neat to share. I hope you had a great Michigan Trails Week last week and that you got to see many old and new floral and faunal friends. Have a good week.